Hello and thank you for downloading this most recent episode of Movie Guys Podcast. Before we start the show tonight, we wanted to give everybody a word of warning that each episode produced by Movie Guys Podcast is for a mature audience. You have been warned. Also, all of our reviews are spoiler filled. So if you have not seen the film that we're going to talk about tonight, turn off the show and come back when you're ready to listen. Thank you so much for downloading and we hope you enjoy the show. Valor Magulis, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Movie Guys Podcast. I am Ed, along here with Eric, and of course, you're joining us for Game of Thrones. Holy crap. Right after the right after the episode, so this is hot take. Yeah, the, mo- the, the episode just ended moments ago. Wow. It's, well, okay, just wow. going up in it. This the the episode was called "The Wolf and the Lion." Is that what that that one was called here? Was it? I mean, I I I, I saw Game of Thrones tweet earlier that it was called like hashtag The Last War, but I, I maybe maybe they was just they were just saying something about. It. Well, uh, um, either way, we got, uh, yeah, it started off kind of rocky, like like it was starting off like sure. how the other episodes were were starting off at sure. where there was pick, sure. picking up plot points and everything else like that, but. You you actually, I, I I really enjoyed this episode. I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and just say that just because I, I feel like they kind of um, found their way to the track just a little bit and they got back to the action and that's this is a big thing of what makes Game of Thrones uh, special is just these these big battle scenes and you don't know what's going to happen and a lot happened in these battles. Oh, oh, a lot happened, but you know I I want to start at the very beginning of the episode. Um, we see Varys and Danny here. Yeah, He's not well, eating. And... Yeah, um, we we see we see Varys opening. We, Varys opens up the episode, and we see that uh, he's writing a letter. He's write, He's writing some ravens. He. I don't know that he gets a chance to send them. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But Varys wants John on the Iron Throne, and he tells. Yeah. He's te- he's trying to tell the world. He he, that, he did a full flip flop, full switch. So Varys yeah, is, is yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I mean, this is what he does, right, for the good of the realm, and yeah. he feels that this is. I I don't blame him. Like everyone else is is team John, so why not? At the same part, the uh the previously on, they highlighted a bit of Danny a bit more. I I kind of have to agree with this with her as well too. Like she's been through a lot, and for her to come up shorthanded where she's at right now, and she feels like she's losing it, she's got to take some actions here, and. Unfortunately, the uh, the decision that she decided, um, well, I mean, she's torn, and this is where she's at right now, where she's kind of uh, uh, fighting between the losses of her war and the loss of her advisors and her confidants mm-hmm. and her friends. So it, you're in you're a, a, a tough jo- a tough situation here, man. Like, what are your options? Well, I, I think she was she was extremely depressed. You know, that was sort of the thing that I got because, you know, she. She, uh, Tyrion comes up to her and, and then she says John betrayed her and then subsequently because John betrayed her everybody else betrayed her and then we get to the moment where we hear the footsteps for Varys and I, I got a very you ever see the movie Donnie Brasco? Yeah, yeah. So the end when Al Pacino knows they're, they're, they're sending for him Right, and he takes off his jewelry. He takes his watch off. He tell he tells his wife, "I love her." Like he, that that moment in that movie is equivalent here uh, to Varys. He knows what's coming. He burns the the last letter he's he's writing. Again, I don't know if he's sent out any sent out any ravens yet. I, I think it's safe to say that because of the scene beforehand with the girl. Uh, hit one of his little whispers yes. or birds, what are you going to call him now? It's safe to say that, that Varys has been talking and has had enough time to spread some knowledge around a bit more, get the get the word out a bit more. So I we're we're under that that assumption already that that's happening. Like he did a full flip flop. He's and he's he's doing it. He's doing what he does. You know exactly, and he's he's not. He, he that's a perfect way. He does. He's doing exactly what he's always done. And when he gets to be executed, what does Tyrion say? He comes right out in front and says, "It was me." 
He, well, th these are two players that are smart enough, or at least we assume they're smart enough to know like what what's going on here, you know. Mm -hmm. And and the beauty about this, because I want to talk about Tyrion a, a bit more, obviously, when, we, when we're done sure. with the Varys, because a lot happens here where, uh, um, either way, but these these two men don't insult each other's intelligence. They know what's happening. Right. And so Tyrion, he already knows that Varys knew that, you know, put mm -hmm. the pieces together there, too. So respectfully enough, he lets him die with that, that the truth and the respect, knowing that Tyrion is, you know, was his only friend and that they were essentially kind of equals uh, as far as, as players in the realm goes as, as their influence goes and uh this is also the big start of I, I have to say this was a really well shot episode like there was a mm -hmm. lot of just beautiful just shots and this was one such where he's being taken out to the to a beach or something at the middle of the night or in the cave rather this the uh, dragonstone mm -hmm. cave I, I mean just just great shots and and this is he went like a like a baller i'll tell you that like this this is a testament to the beauty that is Game of Thrones in all things. When they have to get it right, with one exception being the battle for Winterfell, and, and there were a lot of things that I had to say about that, but one thing that a lot of our fans had to say was that the episode was extremely dark in the sense that you couldn't see it. So I have a hard I have a hard time saying that that was cinema, that cinematography there was 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 good, but I get it. I get what they were trying to do. But my point to that is that Game of Thrones, whatever they needed to get it, Battle of the Bastards, uh, this episode, and several other episodes, this, cinematography-wise, they get it. They know what they're trying to present, and they are absolutely on point, 100%. Were, uh, were those that you mentioned, that these, those were all uh, Miguel episodes, yeah? I believe so. Yes, I believe directed so. Directed by is yes. what i'm going for miguel um well yeah a fan favorite and uh, obviously a hbo favorite too it's sure great job uh and, and this uh in this episode was not a disappointment either again aside from those uh those shots um but just a lot of decisions to to kind of keep the fight uh personal low to the ground we didn't get a lot of dragon mm -hmm. shots and that might have been a money saver decision but still it was sure. fantastic it worked very well um so okay, so now we come to this this after the the execution of Varys, which again, uh, noble enough. If mm -hmm. Varys did what he he stuck true to to his his shit to his gumption, he was doing it for the better of the realm, and he did it. And obviously yep. led him to that. It's unfortunate. He knows it is, and he's like, I I know what I did, and I'll stick to it. So that was pretty and, cool. But and the the red woman's prediction from two from two seasons ago or the previous season comes true. Sure and enough, close close yeah, that one real quick. Yeah, yeah, they close. They, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. We got one episode left. Um, so, and Danny basically tells you what she's about to do because John comes up to her, and she's like, "I don't, I don't have anyone. I don't. Let me get there. I'm gonna, I wrote it down. I don't have love here. I only have fear." And then John says, "Well, I love you." And then they start to make out, and then he backs up a bit, and she says the greatest line in the episode, which is have it be fear yeah that was uh that was a good turning point a po or a moment right there that was fantastic man john you just couldn't take one for the team huh no he can't he can't do it he, we, he's shown us that he taking it for the team is not in his within his ability I mean, he, yeah he I does what it. he sees is right and that's it like he's got this narrow focus on this is what is right this is what i'm telling you is right and we see it later in the episode yeah, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. I, I feel like most people would have been like, "Oh, I already did it once, so you know, kind of you, you drew first blood already. You might as well just keep on going." Mm -hmm. So we know the armies at King's Landing. They they're they're siege. They haven't sieged anything yet, but they're stand, they're standing outside. And Danny tells Tyrion after sort of their discussion that uh, that she has Jamie. Yeah, that Jamie's they caught. Yeah, that they caught Jamie and. Tyrion knows his knows exactly what he's, and you can see it, his face turning. You can see it, and he, he he knows exactly what he's about to do. He he asks, he goes and asks Davos for the favor, and then he goes and frees Jaime, knowing it's a suicide mission. This is um, a, a big part. This is what I wanted to get into about Tyrion here. Is that this is a, a guy who leaves his meeting with Danny. Uh, uh, which she knows, like, listen, you're on your you're on your last life here, dude. One more, mm -hmm. and and that's it. Right. He he knows this, and so this guy does a hail mary attempt, and mm -hmm. it just keeps on does do, doing like risky shit over and over, and then he warns people about the bells. I I 
swore that when he was warning people, when Tyrion was warning that, hey, listen, when you hear the bells, when you hear the bells, when you hear the bells, that means surrender, that means surrender. I'm just mm -hmm. like, I'm half inclined to, you know, respect Cersei in this and be like, well, that's, that could be a potential trap if she knows, has that knowledge in her pocket type of thing. But at the same part, this guy went from having a lot of misses with Danny to suddenly mm -hmm. just getting it all right. And he sets yeah. this, this whole thing up in, in kind of a way, uh, with the help of, of obviously the dragon help here, that, that helps out, that everything was going to be set up where it's going to be casualties, very minimal, and damage would be left to, to minimal as well too. You get to keep intact everything, and you would even have the respect of the people. Like that's the, the big part of it is that you, people would live, and you just walk in and you just take it. No problem. Done deal type of thing. He had that, and he, and he set it all up, and or at least for the most part, he tried to. And he wanted no part in that. We we'll talk about the, the the moment later where there was there was a moment where Danny had the opportunity. The Golden Company was gone just like that, and she had the chance. Yeah, that Golden she Company had, was, was quick, wasn't it? Like that, we, that was, was a few sentences quick. in the beginning or, or the last season, and then suddenly it just they were out. They were that supposed to be the real world's quick. greatest here. And, yeah, no, no, no match for dragons. Um, so, you know, like I said, it, um, so then we get the Hound and Arya, they, they show up and we know exactly what their mission's going to be. Well, that's pretty clear stated at this yeah. point here too. Yeah. They, they've told us and, uh, as everybody's going into the Red Keep, you see the Ar Arya and the Hound, I don't want to call it sneaking in because they're not, because they're right in the open. Yeah, they're, they're charging, and, dude. They're like aggressively charging, it's, and they make it through. And Jamie doesn't, which is a key plot point in this episode. Is that Jamie doesn't make it through the crowd, so he has to go around, and he has to do what Tyrion told him to do, right? When he, Tyrion freed him, and then the battle begins, and then it happens. You get this this dragon action here, which is listen. I, I understand that there's going to be a lot of people about this because they think, well. Well, when uh, um, was it Rhaegon died or uh, dragon's name uh, mm -hmm. Rhaegal? Is that what it is with an L? Anyway, I do not remember, but yes. When uh, Euron killed that dragon, and people were disappointed, and then I think the official excuse was that they're going with the cloud excuse, is that the dragons were chilling in the clouds. Mm -hmm. I, I that was one that just seemed to get a lot of traction, popularity. So that's why they were able to get such an easy shot. That's why they weren't able to see the fleets. Yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really matter. But either way, Drogon is not having this. Neither is Danny. Goes down and just destroys. Really, what we wanted to see in the first place was Dragon doing some Dragon shit. And that's what we got. And this is where it, it just it, it hit the gas. This is where it kept on going. Is right exactly. when she destroyed the, the, the fleet with Euron uh, ships, then it's just... It makes sense, too, what she's doing. Like, getting right on the perimeter. Just taking it all out, staying low, just kind of even, making it harder for them to... I mean, that's a fast dragon, too. Just cool, taking it all out. And it, it just yeah. looked like it was just textbook. Everything was just so well executed. Outside, you have the Northerners, and you have the Dothraki just, just watching. And there no sweat. Just no one was going to happen. It was well done, well planned, well executed. And that's why everything after that it made it such more of a dramatic effect. Danny literally blew the door off the Golden Company, hands down. After clearly winning this this war, though, and at a point where I mean, you know, I'm yelling at the TV. You know, baby girl, you got it. You got everything. You got it right now. Mm -hmm. You won. You, uh, you know, the bells are, are being run. Uh, the Landis, the soldiers are putting their swords down. Everyone's on your side. Everyone's ready, you know. And yeah, Danny, thinking... Danny wins, but she ain't done. Okay. And the the one thing that I kept thinking at that particular moment was one of the great lines and one of the great Metallica songs, "For Whom the Bell Tolls." There you go. The bells were tolling. They were surrendering. Danny has her moment. She sees it. She she seizes the opportunity. Cersei never saw it coming. I, I don't think and, I did either, man. I mean, to be honest, after like you have such an easy win like that, you would just think, you know, there's there the line that got that 
well, I, I hearken back to that she says at the very beginning, well, I don't, I don't want to say at the very beginning, but Danny literally says, our mercy is our strength. Yeah. And and it was. They 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 knew that, that they were very merciful people. And Danny, I hate to use another, another line like this, but hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Will you quit? Uh, with the quotes, man. Like, yeah. you know, say something original here. Yeah, right. I, I'm sorry. I'm just stealing from other people, particularly the Bible. So we'll just go with that. So, but, but she has sorry. a decision to make right now. Mm -hmm. And she had said, obviously, before, it's clearly stated that, that John has the respect because of his actions. And so she is just going to take that through fear. She's obviously going to become the thing that she was fighting against this entire time. But she's done with that bullshit. And yep. again, I kind of have to be on her side about this. So she's just like, no, listen, I've come too far just to, you know, take this easy win and then have the people fight over about how you're going to be king. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just this other thing. So she's, yeah, she, she saw an opportunity and, she, and boy, did she take it. I didn't think, you know, I thought it was going to be just like a few up and down rows just to get the message clear type of right. thing. But nope. God damn, that dragon didn't, <laughs> oh man, like. She was just like, no, there, there are no survivors. We're starting anew. <laughs> yeah, we are going. We're going to literally rebuild from the ground up. And it's funny because in her vision, in I forget what episode it was. I think it was season two when she's in the house of the undying. She is going to save her dragons. Maybe season three. I don't remember. But she's in the house of the undying, and she has this vision where she has the open throne and it's just all ash or snow, but we now we know it to be ash. And that vision absolutely came true and it was her own fault. It was her own fault. Yeah. She did this. She did this. And we see like Cersei and, and Tyrion, they they can't believe what's happening. Nobody can believe what's happening. Cersei has never been outmatched and outsmarted before. And and she was. Well, that, I mean, she she took a gamble on this one. She rolled the dice on this one, and obviously, uh, you know, a dragon won this time. I yes. I mean, you would think like it was it was the other episodes were set up. That's what it was. You know what it was? The other episodes were so, were so bad, and the reason why they were so bad is so they can make this one look better. Mm -hmm. So Maybe. They, they knew what they were doing. You know, it's I don't think that was intentional, obviously, but. So we get to the point where John sees what's happening. He knows what's going on. It took him a second, and he sees that uh, Grey Worm, and then Grey Worm starts to kill the innocent Lannisters. We've never heard innocent Lannisters before, but the Lannister army, uh, the Unsullied, start to kill them. That's when it gets and fucked up. That's that's when it, yeah, that's when the PTSD really for me started to, started to happen. Something. The things that led to the PTSD started to kick in. Yeah. John starts to he stops the Northmen. He stops the uh, the Vale army. He the army of the Vale. He stops everybody besides the Unsullied. He stops his army. Well, then he gives and, you know. Then he's like, "Those are enemy soldiers." He kind of reluctantly does it. Like it's just it's a rough scene to watch because you, you again you see this turn. Like this these are the characters that you know you traveled with, and you mm -hmm. see you see them turn from the good guys to the bad guys in this. So. It's a it's a good turn, man. Well, you know, you, yeah. you die a good guy, or you live, live long enough to become the bad guy, or a villain, or whatever the hell. Wow, that was a what? What talk about a callback? Um, and uh, who said what about quotes? Stop with the quotes. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, rubbing off so, on me. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so Jamie, so we get the moment we one of the moments we've been waiting for since last season. Jamie versus Euron. Okay, that I want to talk about that for a little bit. Um, so Euron says, "I'm going to get the, I'm going to get it wrong. I didn't write it down." But he says something like, "So I, if you kill me, I'll be a, just another king for you." Yeah, um, because he, you know we we go back to him being Kingslayer, which we haven't been. He hasn't been called for several years now. And Jamie says to him, "You're not a king." He goes, "Well, I fucked her." He goes, "Well, I fucked the queen." I I wanted Jamie. There was a moment that that battle left a little something to be desired to me, but Jamie. Jamie didn't say, well, you know, he didn't pull the Maury moment. You are not the father that I was waiting for. Um, but that battle, I mean, again, it left a little bit something to be desired, but it was exactly what Game of Thrones does. 
it was it, uh, it was gritty. Yes. You know, I, I think that that's kind of why I like that. It where it was it was close close melee. It was it mm-hmm. was gritty, and it was it was just rough, dirty hands on hand. It was it was. I don't know. There's that moment where like both of them are just kind of strangling each other, and you can just tell that like they're they're really they're, there's a lot of em- of emotion in this fight, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, Euron stabs Jamie, and then we cut to Cersei back in the Red Keep, and she can't believe she lost. She doesn't. She she's crying. She can't. She can't understand it. And that's when we get. Like, listen, we need to leave now. It's time to go. We're done. We lost. Let's get over it. All the scorpions, the scorpions have been destroyed. Here we go. Like, it's, we're done. We need to, we need to run. And then you cut right to the next moment, which is the hound and Arya. And the hound says, listen, do you want to look like, do you want to be me? I've been wanting revenge my entire life. You need to leave. And this is the last time that the Hound saves Arya, which he had done several dozen times. Oh, yeah. um, several several to a dozen times, excuse me, um, throughout the series, which I, I love that they harken back to this. I, I really do. The Hound and Arya, their their relationship to me forms a, a force bond, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, especially during this episode. You see the two of them, their, their stories are sort of parallel. Their fights are parallel. Well, I, I think... Yeah, uh, guarding gives the hound a reason, mm-hmm. and I think that's the only reason that he has besides revenge, and that's why I think mm-hmm. he holds on to it. But revenge is still the thing that drives him, and that's why it it, it takes him to to the mountain to fight him to to travel all this way just to to know that I mean he's going to die there. That's his he's accepted this fact, and it's uh, it's ugly truth, it really is. And we get something we've been waiting for since day one for fucking. We get Clegane Bowl. Everyone, Finally, we got Clegane Bowl. And it uh, did it end the way that you wanted it to? I mean, how I, it was a pretty. So it was pretty cool. Like with 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 the exception of me, the only thing I could think of with that battle was I think that they took, I think they took a note from the Highlander. Oh yeah, yeah. Because with the, with the exception of it, it wasn't lightning; it was dragon fire, and it was the building falling around them. Yeah, I, I just kept thinking there can be only one Clegane. Yeah, for for sure. But once the battle finally ended, the two of them they, they like you're, you're you're literally talking the Hound, who is a great fighter, the only person he can't beat outside of Brienne of Tarth. The only person he can't beat was his brother, and he knew it. So he finally goes and does what he feels like he has to do, stabs him in the chest, st- that stabs him through the chest plate, stabs him several times with the dagger, and and the it ends the only way it could end. It, I, I said this, you know, I, I hate to I hate to say this again, but my sister and I text constantly throughout the episode, and I, I said to her, I said it's the only way it could have ended. If you would have had the Hound win, it would have been unsatisfactory because you have to kill off the Hound. Yeah. If you had the Mountain win, it would have been sad and unsatisfactory because it's the fucking mountain. He's a zombie. So it ends the only way it could have ended, which is which is the Hound up against the wall. Well, figuratively, I guess. He knows he's about to die. This is it. He's He knows he will not survive. He can't get out of, out of the Red Keep. So he just he just spears pulls a yeah, yeah he just pulls uh, he wants to, to kill the mountain so badly that yes. even at the cost of his own life he'll he'll do it. But again, he's accepted his his own death, and so he's just like I'll yeah. anything it takes to to kill this guy too. Also, not to undermine also the the quick uh, death of Kyburn too. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, just was pretty ironic that he's killed by his own creation. Right, mm-hmm. but just toss like a rag doll when he's tried to, to order the mountain around him. I'm just like, no, we ain't having this, bitch. Just slaps him right into a rock and just uh, pops like a like a grape, man. That was a great shot. I, I hate to pick a, a different story to which they're hearkening back to, but that's Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein. Yep. You know, killed by his own creation, and you know, it's it, I get it. Like, there's several different storylines for Frankenstein since Mary Shelley's book, but. 
that's exactly what this was. It was killed by your own creation. That was a, they've taken all the great, literally literary arts and great films and great stories. And they're just, they're, they're bringing it to this episode. Um, and then moving on, we get to Jamie and Cersei. And I did, I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about them because they game of Thrones has spent eight years telling us the story. But Jamie and Cersei, they finally get to the basement where Robert Baratheon had put all the all the skulls and where Tyrion and Jamie had met before. It's like the hidden place in the Red Keep. And the exits are blocked. And Jamie knows it. Jamie knows he's dying. And Cersei begs, begs for her life to Jamie. Yeah. Cries and is just saying, I don't want to die. Don't let our baby die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And Jamie says, um, he goes, he said, just, what, what was the, what was the line? I'm, 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 I don't remember. It was like, it doesn't matter. We're the only thing that matters. Yeah, it's, that's it. And they, they, they just die together. The, the red keep falls on top of them and they're dead. So they're yeah, gone. Shakespearean enough as it is, I get it. But what does this mean? Yeah, yeah. Like Brienne is still sitting in Winterfell and she's still like, obviously that's that was a shit move for Jamie, like yeah. to, to do that. And people are going to be disappointed about that too because again, like he chose to do this. He, he could have had, he could have just stayed there, could have stayed with Brienne and, and he could have lived a life without Cersei, but there was this connection that he has with, with Cersei for some reason. They shared a womb together, and then he touched her womb with his penis. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, hey, wait a minute. No. Uh, do you, in that case, uh, yeah, born in the womb, do you think that that last shot that of them, I mean, because it was very poetic, obviously, in, in each other's embrace, very close to each other, but uh, as the walls are just kind of caving around them, I mean, they're probably going to again leave this world the same way that they came in, kind of in that in that in that embraced position type of thing, you know? That's, yeah. Yeah, it's actually kind of a um, a good shot, actually, kind of a good hmm, good observation. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that. I mean, that, that was a great catch. I did. I didn't. I didn't think of that. I mean, as we're talking, you know, yeah, they're twins, and they so were born the way together. You close they, an arc. Yeah, they did. They they were born together and they died together. And man, oh man! I mean, and then the thing with Arya, like she just she just keeps on fighting. She refuses to die. She keeps moving. And we get this thing at the end where the woman and child who saved her, she saves one last time, or so she thinks. And ends up the move that she does ends up getting them killed. Well, you have a uh, uh, this episode. Those two were kind of like the um, the girl in the red coat effect of oh. Schindler's List type of thing, where they were keep on doing callbacks, so you know that they're you don't know who these people are, but them being on screen would show that they're going to play some sort of part. And obviously, Correct. we get this part where it's to the realization of Arya that she just had a new name to her list. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. You know, I, with the look she gives when she gets on that white horse, again, more symbolism, you know, more callbacks to other stories. She gets on that white horse, and it, did she add Danny to her list? I mean, is that a thing now? Like, is she said she doesn't plan on coming back? And I know we have one episode left. Man, oh man, like, is is that a thing? Is is at the expense of ending our show talking about this, because I, yes, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about uh, your theories and thoughts, but I didn't really want to, I, I, then again, I didn't, because I just want to let the show play out. I, well, yeah, of, of course. I, uh, yeah, like, this is, this is going to give a lot to talk about. This was, this was good. I think this is really what we needed right now was an episode like this, just to burn mm -hmm. it the fuck down. And that's literally what happened both that's figuratively, exactly figuratively and literally. Everyone just burn this the fuck down because I I like this. My girl Danny is now just taking the throne, and she's just like, uh, who who next? Let's go. Mm -hmm. I uh, man, this is um, the the screenshots or the, the for the previews of the next episode have her kind of like in this almost like first order esque 
uh, uh, kind of shot of her just kind of walking out to her might, her military uh, power, and just in, in the ash, you know. Oh, wait. What was that in that case? Uh, what was Littlefinger saying? Some people, he, they, we watched the, the world burn just so they could be king of the ash or something. He was taught. He was talking about Cersei at the at that particular moment. I think it was. Oh, was it? Was that? It was a comment about Littlefinger. All right, maybe I'm digging. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're right. I mean, we're we're going back several seasons, but yeah, Littlefinger does say, you know, Cersei's the kind of person who would burn the world just to rule over the ashes. Or um, again, I'm not verbatim. I'm getting it wrong, but he says that, and he was he was right about the predict. The prediction was right. It was just about the wrong person. True. Chat brings up a and, good point here. If we're going there, uh, what's the deal with the, the white horse at the end, too? Does it, that uh, signifies anything uh, in particulars? Or do you think it was just um, some sort of, well, herring for something else? Well, the Game of Th we we've got an hour and a half left of Game of Thrones. Next episode is it. There are no more red herrings. The, the, writers, have, the writers have given us enough red herrings throughout the franchise, or excuse me, for, throughout the season series, that there are none left. So the symbolism to me, and I want you to retort, and I want you to, to argue or, or agree, Arya is the savior of the realm. Yeah, you think because that's... Because uh... you, you get the line, you, you get the line, you get all the symbolism for... you. Add, look, 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 look. Let's just go to the, the, the biblical terms, let's go to all the writing, previous, uh, all the, the, the historical things, the, the great white horse or the great white knight, the kind of thing is like it symbolizes light, it symbolizes the savior, it symbolizes the things to come. It symbolizes the people that are the people that are there to help, right? Yeah, they are the they are the divine, yes. Correct. So we get the white horse and it's 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 symbolism, but it, there's no underlying tones, I don't think. And I, I think Chad for his question, but at the same time, I'm talking about chat. <laughs> oh, the chat question. I think the chat question. Sorry, I'm sorry. I misunder. I misheard what you said. Um, but yeah, it's it's the symbolism is very is very blatant. Okay, they're they're giving you exactly what they're going to tell you. This is the sub. This is what they just gave us at the uh, end was the summary, in my opinion, of what is about to happen. Well, what if it's a, this is because. As of recently, Arya, these dominoes have been falling her way pretty, pretty well. Either whether it be Bran giving her uh, the dagger that saves the realm, or whether it be uh, what's it, the, the the Red Witch Melisandre uh, mm -hmm. telling her not today, or her just like so. The gods are obviously like having it fall her way. That really is what it seems. And so this horse probably is just one of the uh, one of the same as well too, where the gods have a plan for her. And not today. So get on to that get horse a, and get and get the hell out of here. To get a little nerdy, I forget the episode, but Misande says that in Old Valyrian, prince and princess, the word is the same. The word is not gender specific. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. so the prince that was promised. That was the prince that was promised. That, that quote also means prince or princess. So is that your vote for, so Ari, for Team Aria, Danny here? Aria, or, you, or you want Arya? Arya is Arya, in my opinion, they've been leading us here this whole season. And I don't think that they're going to give us red herrings. I don't think that that's the thing. I don't think Arya is going to sit on the Iron Throne. She wants no part in it. She's not a lady. But Arya will be the catalyst. And Arya is a princess the brother or sister of the king, right? Sure. Or daughter or whatever. Well, so, either way, we, I, can, we can agree on one thing in that Bran better goddamn do something next episode. He's done. I think Bran's done. I, I, he, has nothing, he has nothing HBO, left to give us. You are going to get a letter from me in Movie <laughs> Guys Podcast and just like, it, it's just going to read say, Bran, what the fuck? You know? I, okay. Okay. All right, so let's let's look. I you just want to. You wanna, can't give me that and then just leave it with that. Like that's it's bad. I, writing. It's bad. All right, I I want. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the carpet. I want to give you red carpet. I want to give you the floor. I want you to tell me. 
you want to do we want to do this? Do we want to predict? Do we want to predict or do we want to let it go? I don't even know. Like after this episode, I don't know if I can predict. First off, I don't know who's still in the in the game. Tyrion's still in the game. I, I don't think he. Tyr Tyrion's alive. Danny's alive. John's alive. Ari's alive. Sansa's alive. Yeah. Um, Grey Worm's alive, but I don't think he's gonna. He won't sit on the Iron Throne. The, the players in the game: Arya, John, Danny. Tyrion and Sansa. Well, oh wait, we uh, Cersei lost. So, what do you think is going to happen about Bronn? Well, I, I, whoever lives is going to fulfill their promise. If Tyrion lives, somehow, somehow, if Tyrion lives, he'll fulfill his promise. He'll give them Ooh, Highgard. He'll give, give, he'll give. He'll give Bronn Highgard. Think Bronn will kill Tyrion? Like that no, be? no. Bronn, Bronn gave. Bronn had a shot. And he sat there and he showed us, again, his true colors. And he said, look, this is the offer I was given. I'm giving you the shot. I'm giving you a chance at giving me a better offer. This is it. If you don't give me the better offer, I'm going to kill you. And he gave them, and Tyrion gave him a better offer. And we know that Cersei's dead. So Bronn is out there hiding somewhere. Just so waiting you know, the he's still in the game. He's still somewhere. He is, but he's not... I, I don't. Uh, he's not going to sit on the Iron Throne. That's not his thing, bro. It's, it's, watch Bran come out of nowhere, resurrect the dead, and then they wipe out Danny. There you go. I'm going to go straight to left fucking field with that you prediction. Fuck, that, is, that is that is that is an Oakland left field right there. <laughs> I, I'm putting too much into Bran, and, I, and, and yeah. I'm just disappointed. I don't know. I mean, it seems like a lot of people just. Uh, I, I mean. All right, I, I just want to let the show be what it is. Uh, I'm so excited. We've got one episode left. Um, subscribe to us on, on, on YouTube, please. Uh, you know, just, just go on our Instagram or Twitter or wherever. Uh, there's links to our YouTube there, um, at Movie Guys Podcast on Facebook and at Movie Guys Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Um, so... Again, thank you so much for everybody that, that makes this show possible. And, of course, uh, thank you to, uh, to all the fans. You know, we're, we're so excited. This is, the Game of Thrones things that, that you and I have been doing, Eric, for the last two seasons um, is, is, are the most popular episodes, hands down, of Movie Guys Podcast. We just want to thank you. Um, I, I so look forward to the final episode I, I don't think they're going to pull Sopranos on us. I don't think it's just going to go black. I don't. HBO is notorious for doing shit, but I feel like the writers are going to give us the answers we want. And we will listen. We're going to join you. You're going to join us. We're going to join you for the last episode. We're going to have a lot to talk about. I want you to laugh with us. I want you to cry with us. Holy crap! We're gonna. We have. We have a lot to go on uh, to, to talk about, and. Uh, I'm just gonna. We're just gonna open the floor next next week. Uh, send us, you know, at us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Just send us anything and everything. Um, don't forget, uh, Movie Guys podcast uh, available for download this Friday and live on Wednesday. We're gonna be talking about Detective Pokemon. Or excuse me, Detective Pikachu. Um, check out our our archives for a brief history of Pokemon uh, for Eric and Jordan. Um, with that being said. Eric, man, I, I I can't wait. I can't wait till next Sunday. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't know who's gonna be on the throne, but anyone. It. it little finger. I, Still gonna little finger's gonna come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you y'all have a great night and join us again next Sunday, immediately following Game of Thrones. Valor Magulus, Valor Dohilus, all that shit, the common tongue, whatever you want to say. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. And we will uh, we'll see you next Sunday for another special episode of, of uh, Movie Guys Podcast presents Game of Thrones, the series finale.